Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted now to welcome Petro Poroshenko, the President of Ukraine, of the new Ukraine, if I may say so, to the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. It's not your first visit, Mr. President, but it marks your first visit as President of Ukraine. When you joined us last year, it was at a very critical moment, and you came as a member of the Ukrainian Parliament and as a leader of the opposition. You arrived here at a very crucial moment for your country, and we all recall your heartfelt plea with the people to stand with the people of Ukraine. Mr. President, 2014 was the most difficult year, certainly in the history, in the recent history of your country. Particularly, we recognize all the challenges on many fronts you had to face. You held an unprecedented first round victory in the presidential race, and the recent parliamentary elections also have given you and your allies a strong popular mandate, which brings the pressure, pressure of high expectations along with the legitimacy to pursue truly transformative reforms. The situation in the Ukraine and in the wider region, in Europe, is clearly of great concern and of significant consequences, not only for us here, for your country, for Europe, but for the whole global community. And the world is looking to your strong leadership and the persistent determination to de-escalate tensions and revitalize the Ukrainian economy and statehood. We presently seem to be in a stalemate situation where all sides may have an increasing and unacceptable price to pay, foremost in human lives and also in economic resources if a solution cannot be found soon. Mr. President, we are very fortunate to hear from you directly about the situation in Ukraine and about your ideas how this conflict could be brought to an end and how we, the international community, could assist you and support you in your efforts. Mr. President, the floor is yours. First of all, I want to thank Professor Schwab and all the team from Davos for having this uh, opportunity. It's a great honor and a great pleasure for me to have this floor. Exactly one year ago, I was your guest and have the same opportunity to address to the distinguished audience about the future perspective of Ukraine. Exactly one year ago, it seems to me like it was in a different life. Such a big changes we have, not only in Ukraine, not only in Europe, but in the whole world. From first part, we have a positive changes. We have a most free and fair and democratic elections, presidential elections. And uh, all Ukraine, first time to give the votes for me, and it was every single region of Ukraine who support me as a president, that give us a unique opportunity to provide the reform. On the 27th of June, I signed 
the association agreement with the European Union in Brussels. It events were long awaited by the Ukrainian people and was one of the main reasons for the revolution of dignity when the previous president rejected to sign it, stop our Euro integration process and uh, try to move, to turn the vector of our, vector of our development in a different direction. On the 16th of September, this association agreement was ratified uh, simultaneously by the Ukrainian Parliament and European Parliament for more than constitutional majority of votes. And we have a parliamentary election. This was not an easy decision to declare the early parliamentary election in a country which is in a state of war. But the further development of the events demonstrate that this is absolutely clear and right decision. Because Ukrainian people demonstrate very responsible choice and give more than constitutional majority for the political parties promoting and standing strongly for the European integration of Ukraine. So now we have a completely different country. We are as united as never before. All the time, all 23 years before, Ukraine was divided. They want, half of Ukraine want to go to the Custom Union, half of Ukraine want to go to the European Union. Today, Ukraine is completely pro-European. More than 78% of Ukrainians are strongly vote for the European integration. The one year ago, it was only 16% of Ukrainian who support the NATO integration. Today, it's far above 50%. All the time before, the question of religion, the question of language, divide my country. Today, Ukraine united and we are ready to provide a referendum for any question including question of language, question of the structure of my country, and the unity and the unitarian status of Ukraine would be widely supported, on contrary with the federalism status, which would be support not more than 10%. So Ukraine become stronger. Ukraine become more democratic. Ukraine become much more pro-European and ready for the reform. But at the same time, Ukraine has now the most difficult time in their history. Ukraine are now under the aggression. Aggression not only connected to the annexation of the Crimea. Aggression is connected when the 7% of our territory in Donetsk and Lugansk are now also occupied. And the development of their last days are very nervous. And uh, the Situation which we happen in December give us some strong hopes for optimism. From the 9th of December, the, when it was declared by the representative of the Ukrainian general staff and Russian representative minister of defense of Russian Federation, when we declare the so-called artillery silence. Immediately from the 9th of December, the number of the artillery shelling was reduced from the 70, 90 to less than 10. And I was very happy with these figures because that gave us absolutely strong feeling that this terrorist who is opened the fire against Ukrainian civilian and Ukrainian troops are at least under control of Russians. And at least we full implement the Minsk agreement. Minsk agreement, Minsk protocol, and Minsk memorandum, which were signed on the 5th of uh, September and 19th of September, is very simple. 
This is completely based on my peace plan. Point number one, immediate ceasefire. Point number two, from the touchline on the 5th of September, we should immediately withdraw the heavy artillery and weapons. Point number three, immediately release all the hostages which is illegally kept on the occupied territory and on Russian prison. They kept my officer, including the pilot Nadia Savchenko, which is doing nothing wrong but defend their own country. And they was captured, delivered to Russia, and illegally detained in Vorodnyi's prison. And this national hero of Ukraine is, has a hunger strike for the 38th day today. And the only thing we demand in the Minsk memorandum, we immediately release all the hostages. Point number four, very important point. I promise you, we will have absolutely clear and stable situation in Ukraine if Russia fulfill point number four. Close the border and withdraw all the foreign troops from my territory. Because now, and the, the data of the, our intelligence confirmed by the independent sources, we have more than 9,000 troops of Russian Federation on my territory, including more than 500 tanks and heavy artillery and uh, armed personnel carrier. If this is not an aggression, what is the aggression? But unfortunately, and the final point of Minsk memorandum is that immediately when we have a artillery silence, ceasefire, if we remove from the streets armed person, we declare just the very simple thing, election. Local election under Ukrainian legislation. In a democratic country, there is not existing any other mechanism for democracy. Just the person who would be responsible for these regions of the uh, Donetsk and Lugansk should be elected by the people. And this election should be under Ukrainian legislation, should be under, with the presence of the international monitoring mission, and should be recognized by the whole world. Very simple. Ukraine fulfill all the obligation from their side. And we count that Russia and the rebels supporting by Russians can do the same. Instead of that, we have first attack, which was started at, from the 10th of January this year. After 24 hours, I was in Paris. I was among the 50 leaders of the state on the street of the Paris in the marsh against the terror. And I remember the slogan on the Paris street, Je suis Charlie, and we are not afraid. We are not afraid of the terror because we are united. And I was proud to be at that time on the Paris street. Two days after March in Paris, on the 13th of January, we have the tragedy of Polonavaha, when Russian missile operated by Russian support rebels hit the civilian bus. And all Ukraine stand in the movement, Je suis Polonavaha. We are together with the victims of the terroristic attack on the Vlonavaha bus, where 13 civilians, including one 14 years ago, girl, were immediately killed by Russian missile. And 15 additional civilians were innocent victims who were wounded. I have here I have here part of the Volonavaha bus with the heat of the fragments of the Russian missiles which hit in my people. And for me, this is a symbol, symbol of the terroristic attack against my country. The same way symbol like Charlie Abdo, 
in the same way symbol, like a terroristic attack which was done by Russian missile operating by Russian officer against MH17 flight of Malaysian airplane, which were killed 298 innocent victim from 17 countries, which demonstrate that the terror is not a problem of Ukraine, and even not the problem of Europe. This is a global problem, and the fighting against terror is our joint, we can uh, demand our joint efforts. And we can win the terror, and we will win the terror, when we will be united. Because we are not afraid. We are united. And the whole world now is demonstrating the strong solidarity with Ukraine. And I want to thank all of you for that. And the other thing I want to ask from you, not only be united, the same way like you demonstrate on the United Nations General Assembly, the same way like you demonstrate on the United Nations Security Council, the same way like you demonstrate in the G20 meeting at Brisbane, and the same way like you demonstrate in the European Union Council, and solidarity we have from all over, all over the world, starting from the United States and Canada and finishing with Japan and Australia. We need to be Solid, we need to have a, demonstrate a solidarity with Ukraine, and the very important thing, we need to believe in Ukraine, because we are fighting for peace. I am a president of peace. I am strongly believe that there is not existing the military solution of this problem. And we need to have a very strongly coordinated action to bring the peace, not only on my country but to bring the peace in the world. Because, again, this is the line of the front when we're fighting not only for our territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence. We're fighting for European security. We're fighting for European values. Somebody said that this is very expensive to, find, to fight for peace. I think this is two completely different concepts of the world. They measured the expenses by price and said that this is very expensive. We and all civilized world fighting for values. Money and values, completely different things. And I think that if we are fighting for values, we win this battle. Absolutely sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for your again moving speech. You have been in your former capacity as a member of parliament here in Davos last year. You made in a private session a moving speech for the people on the Maidan Square. And again today, a moving speech, so thank you very much for this. And you mentioned peace. And given the escalating situation today in the Ukraine, and look in the audience, they have only one major question. At the same time with the escalating situation, we see again some kind of, you call them Normandy talks, so to bring people together from France, Germany, Russia and Ukraine. And I think at the same time, there will such phone call take place. What is your assessment? Can you give us hope that this will be a new beginning of peaceful negotiations for the people, particularly in the Donetsk region? Thank you very much indeed for this question. Uh, in uh, several minutes, we'll start this, uh, another session of the Normandy format negotiation with the, on the level of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, France, Germany, and Russia. Our approach is very simple. We have nothing to negotiate. Everything is already fixed and signed. We have a Minsk format. And we need immediately just a ceasefire and withdraw the artillery, heavy artillery and weapons and tanks from the touchline. 
What is the difference, slight difference, between the proposition of Europe and Ukraine and of Russia? From the first glance, both of us demanding for, for withdrawing the heavy artillery. But we demanding to withdraw it from the touchline which is fixed on the Minsk memorandum, and Russia just with demanding to withdraw it from nowhere. Because at the present time, officially in Milano, the Russian delegation recognized the touchline. Now they said that they have a limited influence of the terrorist to withdraw from the touchline which fixed on the Minsk memorandum. And the solution is very simple. Stop supply weapons. Stop supply ammunition. Withdraw the troops and close the border. Very simple peace plan. If you want to discuss something different, this is just you are not for peace. You are for war. We, at the same time, guaranteed the special election and the special regime of municipality in this region. We vote for the amnesty of those who has not made a criminal and killing the people. We present every form of the state guarantee for the peace process. What else? We can done. And if, unfortunately, it is not happen, ladies and gentlemen, we should defend our territory. We should defend our country. But at the same time, we do not make any offensive operation and do not make it any from the 5th of September and from the 19th of September. If you look the map, the only Ukrainian troops who were attacked by offensive operation of Russian troops and Russian support rebels. And at the same time, we're just defending our territory. And again, what we need to stop the aggressor? Unity and solidarity. When we rise up first, the question of sanction, this is sanction we demand is not to make harmful for anybody in the world, including Russia. We just want to have it on the table of negotiation and make a pressure to fulfill all the obligation we take during the Minsk process and Minsk negotiation. Very simple. What is the real purpose of some so-called strategistic analysis? To make Ukraine weaker. To wait until the Europe and the whole world have a so-called Ukrainian fatigue. <laughs> this was miscalculation. Because the level of support we now have from the whole world, and we fully feel it in the, here in Davos, the level of support is only rising. We do not give them any tiny chance to use it as a provocation, as they happened in the previous wars. We demonstrate that our, we are na nation for peace, and me as a president of peace. Another very important thing, uh, things with which they are waiting. They think that we will be completely exhausted by the war. Because I opened you the secret, war is very expensive things. Which Ukraine, ha which has not very strong economy, pay this fully price. But at the same time, me as a president, our new elected parliament and our new elected government are strongly committed to the reform. And we want to change the country. We want to build up absolutely new country with no corruption. And we already undertake very serious step creating the anti-corruption bureau, building up the independent system of the court, and guarantee the rule of law. We want to build up together with our foreign partners and advisors absolutely new form of the investment climate, which would be attractive investment. And having an opportunity to meet here with a potential investor, I have a guarantee, and I want to thank this investor, particularly with the sum who's sitting in the first row, who there promised me in this year to invest $600 million in Ukrainian economy, $400 million in Ukrainian economy. And this is the best way I really uh, like to hear. 
And we, am I right? <laughs> this is the representative of Windel Common also. Please, applause to the investor to the Ukraine. I think that would be very important. <laughs> And at the same time, I think that we need a very sophisticated program with the IMF. And on the 29th of, November, of uh, January, I think we will have a finish of the new mission of the IMF and we will have a very ambitious program of the reform. And for that program, we need a pillow, a financial pillow, who can support us during the reform. And that would be created by the IMF, and that would be created with our partner based on our bilateral negotiation. Again, we have a partner who has already confirmed our support from the United States and Canada and finishing from Japan. And, and by the way, the, also we have a very positive signal by the Swiss government, which we are also very pleased to them. So this is also the form of demonstration of solidarity and support. And we thank you very much for that. Not only for the solidarity of Ukraine, but for the fact that you believe in Ukraine. Mr. President, thank you very much for this. And um, you mentioned that it was a year full of momentous in the last year. And uh, unfortunately, Ukraine was always linked to a crisis discussion. And now we have the unique opportunity to change this point of view, to say to the people what happens now, today, in the Ukraine. For sure, there's a security development we're all concerned about. But at the same time, we have the economic development and so my question is, what is for you the most pressing reform to make all these investments which are announced happen as soon as possible for the people in the Ukraine? Look, uh, first of all, I think this is very important that we provide the reform in the, one of the most difficult periods of our history during the time of war. And we already launched the reform. Populistic politicians presenting reform as the lowering of the taxes and rising up the salary. This is not a reform. We are decisively cutting the budget expenditure. We are decisively shortening the bureaucratic apparatus. We are decisively already do the decentralization of the budget funds, giving more power to the region. And I presented the constitutional reform for the real decentralization process based on the experience of our Polish colleague. And we use a lot of advisors and supporters from, for example, from, for the electronic government, from our Estonian partners, from our anti-corruption uh, 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 bureau, from four countries of European Union and from the United States of America. We will use the experience of the Singapore who will share their uh, experience for our anti-corruption bureau. We use the investment climate uh, opportunity also from the Singapore experience, from the Georgia experience, from the European Union experience. And that is demonstrate our decisiveness in changing, the, in, in our real wish to change the country. And Another very interesting characteristics. One year ago, when I was uh, here in Davos, in our government, we have just one English-speaking person. Today, we also have one person who doesn't speak English. Everybody else in our government speaks perfectly English. I think, I think this is also would be very symbolic that we are ready to change the country. Thank you, Mr. President. So my last question is, there were a lot of offers to help you economically, and so I would like to learn from you, what is your assessment? Is it the right scale of support first? And what do you like to expect particularly from the European Union, because there have been some talks in particular about this support? What we have now, we have now strong political support. I was the only leader of the non-member state who has a several time opportunity to have a floor on the European Union Council. 
it was right in the day when we make a special decision on sanction which supporting Ukrainian independence and territorial integrity. So political support is a key issue and very important. Economic support. And now this negotiation with the IMF and our partners, including the IMF, is very important for us. Defensive support. Again, we don't demand from anybody the lethal weapons. We have uh, a very uh, strong army to defend our territory. But defensive technology is also the things which we need because the only strong army can help us to keep the territory. Understanding we do not provide the offensive operation. So political, economic, defensive, and moral support, this is all four key ingredients for supporting Ukraine. And for all four things, we already have a very, very strong messages. And again, I want to thank the audience because you represent here in Davos, uh, not the political sphere, that's true, but the uh, results of this meeting would be, would be understand that we should believe in Ukraine. And in a very near future, I'm an optimistic, and I think that we can stop the war. And when we stop the war, it would be absolutely new, different country when you feel yourself comfortable and happy together with the new Ukrainian people. Thank you. Mr. President, even my last question, you mentioned the unpopular reforms. And we all know that the IMF, for example, has discussed and proposed the question of cut down subsidies for energy. We know that's very hard for the people very unpopular, particularly in this time. But have you a time horizon about this reform? Because it's very interesting for the audience, particularly for the business environment and foreign direct investment. Yeah. Uh, this is not only to rise up the energy tariff. This is not a key issue of the reform. But we provide the absolutely new energy saving technology. We seriously cut the gas consumption. Can you imagine that several years ago, Ukraine consumed 70 billion cubic meters of uh, natural gas, mainly supplied by Russian. More than 50 billion cubic meters was supplied by Russian. Today, from 70, we reduce our consumption to 44. And this is only the beginning of, the, of our way. And I am absolutely sure that in, in two years' time, we will be absolutely energy independent from Russia. We will build up now the absolutely new a way uh, for receiving the Norwegian and other European gas. We will have a shale gas technology inside the country. And I think that the, our main efforts to build up the clear, transparent energy market and reform of the energy sector, including electricity energy, nuclear energy, hydro energy, and uh, the independent coal market uh, will help us and uh, of course, the gas consumption will help us to be absolutely energy independent. At least now I said that this is a responsible policy, bring that Russia lose Ukraine as a market for their natural gas. So, thank you very much, Mr. President. And I think we achieved a lot in terms of trying to change the picture that people now have from the Ukraine, and you would like to have, because we all know that part of the conflict is economically, part of the conflict is a security issue, but a new phase of this conflict is the discussion about information. So you gave us the opportunity, unfiltered, to get to know each other, to understand who is the president of the Ukraine, who is the man who lead the nation in very difficult times. So I would like to say thank you on behalf of the World Economic Forum and the Davos community to you, and I wish you all the best for your nation, for your country, for your people to come as soon as possible to a peaceful solution as the best basis for economic welfare for your people in the Ukraine. So thank you very much again, Mr. President. Philip, you are absolutely right, and I think that the, our uh, unity is not only in a social, economic, moral sphere, but also in information. And the 
Last decision when the European Union are ready to discuss about the creation pan-European Russian-speaking channel just to present an opportunity for the Russian-speaking viewers inside the European Union to have an alternative point of view would be absolutely important in our uh, battle for the brains of the European because truth is with us. And because of that, I want to thank all of the people here who are coming here and let me consider this presence and this speaking with this audience as a form of support of Ukraine. This is what Ukraine really needs right now. Thank all of you.